Hi everyone and welcome to a little bonus episode of Verbal Diorama because speed was a little late. Typical bus, am I right? Uh, as always, I'm Em and if I had three wishes, I'd wish for... So basically, last week I was on holiday, the main reason why speed was so late. And during it, I actually went to see a couple of movies, one of which was Aladdin. But after I saw Aladdin, I felt like, um, same with Captain Marvel, that I wanted to say something about it, um, considering my love for the original 1992 animated version, which I'm proud slash embarrassed to say that I know off by heart both script and song. So my initial thoughts on 2019 Aladdin are, um, by the way, spoiler alert for 2019 Aladdin, um, it's, it's better than I thought it was going to be. Um, the trailers and the promo really didn't do it justice. Um, I felt in the trailers um, that there was no chemistry apparent between the leads in, uh, in, in the trailers or clips. I thought that the outfits looked tacky um, and I was never really convinced about Guy Ritchie. I thought that choice seemed a bit off. Um, when it comes to the movie, I find I kind of found that it did pay off the chemistry issue. Um, but the wardrobe and sort of filming choices um, weren't all that great for me. I understand that you want to perhaps update the movie to a more modern sensibility, um, even though it's obviously set in the past. Um, and the overtly sexualisation of, of Jasmine specifically is a little problematic in the animated version. However, whilst the colours for Jasmine's outfit in this version were amazing, you know, you had loads of lush, hot pink, orange, turquoise, the fabrics didn't look as expensive as you'd expect the daughter of a sultan to look. Um, so overall, I thought the movie was OK. It's not awful. It's not great. It's kind of somewhere in the middle. It felt mostly unnecessary, um, but they did do some great updates to some parts of the original movie. But then they also took away things that I think were still important to the story overall. So one thing I loved about the original was Jasmine's introduction because she's been kept inside the palace walls all her life. So she escapes the palace to experience Agrabah. Um, we see her say how she feels like a caged animal and that she essentially has no friends, something that the live action movie actually updates. And she wants to know what life is like outside the palace walls. So she escapes and she ends up at the market. Um, in the live action movie, we meet her at the market and it's implied that she's done this before. Um, and she basically pretends to be her handmaiden and friend Dahlia. Um, and she she basically tells Aladdin that since her mother died, she's never been allowed outside of the palace. So no one really knows what she looks like. Um, but I would have liked to have seen the whole escape um, because I think that's a really integral part of Jasmine's character, how determined she is to understand the world sort of outside the palace. And I think it would have really benefited this new Jasmine who we see is wants to be very socially aware. She wants to do something um, about the poverty in Agrabah. Um, but I just want to talk quickly about Mina Masood because I didn't he's obviously completely unknown um and i thought his acting performance was good um i thought his dancing was outstanding there's quite there's a couple of scenes where he dances i don't know if it's a a dancer that's kind of his head is on I, i'm not too sure um singing wise he was okay um but the issue i have with a lot of these disney live action remakes is that because the original singers in the animated versions were professional singers um so, you know actors don't just compare you know they don't have the same range but you know he was okay and I thought his look um, as Aladdin was great because he has that really great smile and Aladdin the character is known for that that big Tom Cruise-esque grin because the character was actually based uh, partially on Tom Cruise so you know he he has to smile well and I think overall I think Mina did really great work um I mean Naomi Scott, for me, was probably the most well cast. Um, she gave this um, ferocity to Jasmine that was 
updated from the animated version. I love that she's looking out for the people and wants to do, like I say, something about the poverty she sees in the city, whilst also tackling the sexism present in the patriarchal society that she's ultimately a part of. And she had the best voice by far of the whole cast, but her original song felt a bit um, weird. It was kind of like it was from another movie or it maybe the next Taylor Swift chart topper or something. Um, I think the meaning behind the song was great, uh, but it all seemed a bit shoved in. Um, and I think it kind of disturbed the balance of the movie a little. Overall, though, I thought Naomi was fantastic. And I think she's definitely proving to be a real up and coming star. Um, Marwan Kanzari has the unfortunate task of looking great in the promo material. Um, and probably the only one who actually came out of the promotional material unscathed uh, because everyone was like, oh, my God, Jafar is really hot. But being wholly underperforming in the movie, I expect Jafar to be menacing. And his Jafar just felt irritated. Like, I didn't feel the rage or anger from the original Jafar. He felt a little bit out of place, which is such a shame when we could have had a real presence of an iconic Disney villain. Um, rounding out the cast, there was Naveed Nagarban, um, who was a good update for the original Sultan, who admittedly is just a bit of a bumbling idiot in the animated movie. So really, anything they could have done with the Sultan would have been an improvement. Um, and finally, um, Nazim Padrad um, playing this new character, Dahlia, Jasmine Handmaiden. I like the inclusion of a friend for Jasmine. Um, and honestly, I liked her more than I thought I would from the trailer and the released Prince Ali clip. Um, but although I like Jeannie's story, I thought their romance was really forced. I want to talk about Will Smith in a bit because I liked him a lot, but there were parts where I didn't and I feel like I really need to explain why. Um, also, um, Iagu, Abu, Raja and Carpet, I'm lumping them together as secondary characters because they're all CGI creatures or rugs, sorry. Um, Iago, I was missing Gilbert Gottfried. However, the fact they made Iago more parrot-like wasn't a terrible thing. And I still got voice work from my future husband, Alan Tudyk, so that makes me happy. Abu was fine, but a little weird in places. Uh, Raja looked great. Um, obviously, something, some of the animation they may be taking from the future Lion King, um, because he looked very uh, realistic, but he wasn't in it that much. Um, Carpet was fantastic and the real standout performance for me, uh, but then Carpet always was. The way Carpet can speak with just a gesture is amazing and the animation is just superb. So still a massive fan of Carpet. Um, I also just want to mention the Cave of Wonders because I expected it to look A, a bit more wonderful and B, the face to actually move. Um, there definitely needed to be more treasure in the Cave of Wonders. That scene in the original is one of my favourites and it was tense but I still wanted more lava and more carpet. So I want to move on to Will Smith in a section I'm going to call the Will Smith issue. Now overall I'm a fan of Will Smith. I enjoy a lot of Will Smith's movies. I grew up watching him in The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. I think he has really great comic timing and he seems to be a really affable guy. But for me he has the same issue that Tom Cruise primarily has. When Tom Cruise plays Tom Cruise, um, I find the movies a little bit samey and dull. I much prefer Tom Cruise when he plays against type and surprises you with his range. Um, now, Will Smith, for me, only ever really plays Will Smith. You know, he's that really cool, funny guy that everyone likes. Great comic timing, awesome guy that you'd want to hang out with. But as an actor playing a character, I want to see something else from him. And in this movie... He's playing Will Smith. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because he knows his market. He knows what the people want and he gives them that. But taking on such an iconic role, I guess I wanted more than Will Smith playing Will Smith the genie. The fact that he was Will Smith the genie wasn't a wholly bad thing. Um, in fact, I'd argue no one could have taken on such a role without such a massive personality as Will Smith. I guess I'm contradicting myself a little, um, but I'm trying to explain what I mean and I'm failing massively. Um, but speaking of the genie, um, I thought the arc of his character was better than in the animated movie. I like that when Aladdin sets him free, that he becomes human. When Will Smith did his own thing, kind of, you know, ad-libbing his own lines, um, he was enjoyable to watch. But when he repeated lines from Robin Williams' genie, is kind of when it fell flat for me. 
And I get they're working that fine line between paying homage to Robin and creating a character different from Robin's, but there were times when it just didn't work for me. Because let's not forget the movie Aladdin, the 1992 Aladdin, was built not only around Robin Williams, but for Robin Williams. Disney wanted him as the genie before they even approached him. Robin Williams recorded his lines often multiple times with multiple different jokes, innuendos, pop culture references over and over and over again. Um, It's said that Disney still has all these recordings locked away, but they can never use them. Uh, Robin Williams performed prior to the animation being worked on because he was so full of personality and energy. The animation was completed after he had his recordings done. And that just didn't happen on animated movies up to that point. You see, Williams initially agreed to be a part of Aladdin for Screen Actors Guild scale pay, which at the time was $75,000. And that was as long as the genie didn't take up more than 25% of the poster and that they didn't use his name for merchandising or tie-in products. I mean, that's kind of like asking a bear not to poop in the woods, but still, obviously, Disney went against his wishes. And so Robin Williams fell out with Disney big time for years. Robin Williams also had a clause in his will stating that Disney can't use the voice or performance as Robin Williams as the genie for 25 years post his death. So all that recorded material they have will probably never again see the light of day. Sorry, had to. (laughs) Contrary to popular opinion, genie was not Robin Williams' first animated role. It was Batty Coda in Fern Gully, The Last Rainforest. In fact, his performance in Aladdin very almost didn't come to be because he was working on Fern Gully. Disney weren't happy about Fern Gully, which was coincidentally also using ex-Disney animators on its staff, but also that Robin Williams was doing the voice for Batty Coda, which is something that the um, production of Fern Gully um, actually specifically created for him. Williams refused to back out of the production because the ideas behind Fern Gully of environmental awareness and deforestation were very dear to his heart. So Disney couldn't do anything as Williams had signed on to Fern Gully before they approached him for Aladdin. But this is Disney, so they made sure to make Williams know how they felt. And Williams basically retorted back that if they wanted him for Aladdin, they'd have to let him do Fern Gully. Um, the situation, therefore, wasn't all sunshine and roses on either side. Um, And so ultimately, in 1992, Robin Williams' voice was therefore lent to two animated movies, um, one being exponentially more popular than the other. Although Fern Gully is a lot of fun, and don't be too surprised to see it on Verbal Diorama at some point, because I love that movie. It's very, very sweet. Um, The genie wasn't the first character to be voiced by a big name actor. But since then, actors have been lining up to grace big screen animations. The inclusion of big name actors is now more prolific in the marketing of some of these animated movies than the plot of the actual movie. I mean, who went to see Shark Tale just on the basis of Will Smith and Angelina Jolie? Probably most people. Does it make it a good movie? A definite no. Um, Shrek is probably the most famous post Aladdin movie that specifically banks on its named lead stars. But everyone's been at it. I mean, can you imagine Toy Story without Tom Hanks? Luckily, that's one performance that is perfectly cast. I can't say the same for 99% of the rest of the animated features that are out there. Um, And just one final point on Robin Williams before I get back to 2019's Aladdin. Um, I think whenever a new actor takes over the mantle of another, it's hard to get the tone right. It's quadruply worse for the new actor when the old actor has passed away and especially when they passed away before their time like Robin Williams did. So on that point I commend Will Smith for taking on such an iconic role and riding out all the hate because ultimately he did a good job. Um, Robin Williams is so beloved to the world of movies and his untimely death was a shock to everyone Um, but since then suicide awareness is something people talk about more. I'm sad we live in a world without Robin Williams, but I'm glad this movie is making us talk about how wonderful he was once more. The plot of the 2019 Aladdin is roughly similar to 1992, but the ending kind of has the biggest change. There's no snake Jafar. 
no hourglass jasmine or slave jasmine for that matter no genie putting the sultan's castle on the highest rock um, of agrabah ultimately though aladdin does persuade jafar that the genie is more powerful and so he does get the phenomenal cosmic power do you really live in space but honestly i would have liked to have seen a bit more of a bombastic ending um i also would have loved to hear jafar's prince ali reprise um the musical numbers just speaking of musical numbers they are fun a friend like me is is really busy like there's a lot going on but it's enjoyable kind of as a comparison piece to the original um prince ali is better than the released clip implies um speechless which was jasmine's new song is okay but as i mentioned it feels a bit out of place and honestly i didn't understand why the people were disappearing as she was singing um maybe someone can explain that to me maybe i'm being a bit of an idiot i'm not sure um the disney live action remakes have been hit and miss uh, my favorite is still the jungle book um which i think is fantastic save for one specific scene which i'm not keen on um the rest are okay this sits firmly in the okay pile but kind of towards the top um it still has a lot of good things going for it and it's still it's still a decent enough movie it improves some things it gives jasmine more to do it gives genie an end to his story and it shows off mina masood's incredible dance moves in those additional scenes that i mentioned before it's just a shame about the character of jafar and I'm really not convinced Guy Ritchie was the best choice. Um, some of the action scenes felt they were, like, I think they were shot in double time and then slowed down. Um, I'm not sure, but it, it looks weird. I'd still recommend the animated version over it. Um, it's so fantastic. And although the references are dated, Robin Williams really shines. And as I mentioned, if anything good is coming from this 2019 version of Aladdin, it's that we're talking about and appreciating Robin Williams. He deserves that. I miss him very much. Thank you for listening to this little bonus episode of Verbal Diorama. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts on Aladdin, both the 1992 animation and all the 2019 remake. Um, this is a little bonus episode, so it's kind of just been slotted in um, to the schedule, sort of after speed. Um, so my next one is actually going to be Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl, which is scheduled to be out kind of next weekend. Um, so, um, so yeah, um, look out for that. If you like this episode, I've done episodes on Titan AE, Captain Marvel, Dread, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow, Pleasantville, The Cabin in the Woods and Speed and they can all be downloaded wherever you get your podcasts from. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram at Verbal Diorama. You can email me general hellos, feedback or suggestions verbaldiorama at gmail.com. If you like what I do and you want to leave me a great review you can do so on iTunes and I'd really appreciate that. Or if you want to buy me a coffee, which honestly I pretty much run on, you can do so at ko-fi.com slash verbaldiorama. Thanks again for listening. I will see you next time. And you ain't never had a friend like me. Bye.